managing doing well what's up tobias i see you bro A little bit cloudy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brother. Wa alaikum salam. What's up, my brother? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying my best just like everybody else, man. Just trying to, you know, trying to trying to survive trying to get through this time and trying to stay positive most of all you know you got a, you got a day off right now from the hospital no man actually i just <laughs> i just rolled out the hospital man real fast you know <laughs> what i'm saying i got i got i went through my patients early today and just got done got out of there um i've been working pretty much almost every day um i, I got a couple days off next week um but man just be, besides that man just just grinding bro just working man that's yeah. what's up man well, i'm glad you i'm glad you Doing what you're doing, man. I'm glad that you're healthy and uh, man, I appreciate that, brother. I, I know it's kind of. I mean, how was that working um in the hospital during Ramadan, man? Like, is that is that is it difficult? More difficult um, than usual? I mean, you, you know, um, it normally like I, I'm I'm usually you know stressing about my fast and things like that, but I don't know for some reason, man. I'm just I just feel like I'm on this mission right now, and it's like I see the way people are, you know, struggling and the, the, the way people, how sick people are. And it's just, it's taking that away from me. I'm like, I got nothing to complain about, you know? And that's yeah. kind of the vibe that I got more so this year than any other year. I just feel like, man, people are going through such problems all around the world and look at these sick patients in the hospital. I mean, what do I have to complain about? So I got to wait some hours to eat. So what, you know, and that's kind of my vibe. And Alhamdulillah, it's been good. It's just, uh, you know, with not being able to go to the masjid and things like that, that we usually do every year. It's just, uh, you know, definitely take, a setback for for the for the Muslim community in that sense, but we're stronger in the sense that it's just making us all that much more appreciative of what we have. Of course, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, well, I commend you. when it's Ramadan, man. I don't be doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you know I, I, I I'm just like, not that I don't want to. Like, I, of course, I'm doing stuff, but I just be like, it just be like, um my energy level ain't the same. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. um, like even like, you know, like I got up today, I started working on some music, but like yeah. what, um, what, what normally takes me a certain amount of time may take me like twice as long. You know what I mean? Just because yeah. my, my, like early in the day, it's okay. Like I said, I give you an example. Yeah. Like yesterday I was finishing, I was working on this song. I was writing mm -hmm. it. And, um, as the hours went on, as it got closer to time to uh, break fast, my brain just wasn't working. You know? Yeah, you were just that, when that hypo when that hypoglycemia hits you, man, you're just like, yo, Whoa. I need some, I need some carbohydrates in my body right now. <laughs> I need some water. I need some hydration. I, I right. I had to shut it down. I was just like, you know what? This is. I, I just need to just chill. And then, yeah. and I don't know if this happens with you. It's for me when I finally do get a chance to eat. You know, I try to drink some water eat some yeah. fruit and then eat a meal yeah. or whatever. But then after that, I just be sleepy after that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it, it does. It does. It does definitely cause those kind of things. Like, you know, even like, you know, after if the hard time when I eat, I always think, okay, I'm going to save all my activities till after. But then after I eat, I just want to go to sleep or I just, you, you know, lay down. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, gonna do, I'm like, yo, like going to the gym. Right. So I'm like, yo, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get a good workout in tonight after I open my fast. But bro, last thing I'm thinking about after I open my fast is going to the gym. <laughs> Bro, you know what and what makes it more well i think what makes it a little bit more um you know difficult um uh, well alhamdulillah you know we're able to do it but i think the fact that um that we're doing it like basically in the summer months you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah so no, it definitely makes the, a difference the nights are so much shorter so it's like what you yeah. know by the time you finish eating it's nine o'clock nine thirty yeah. or whatever yeah. Like, yeah. what are you gonna, you know what I mean? Like, and then you, then you gotta get, go to sleep or you gotta rest. Yeah, up. I mean, you know, exactly. It's just not enough. It'd be different if it's like February. You know, it's get dark. Yeah, those five, are short. Right? They get done at like five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, five, yeah. five thirty, and you're and you're done. You got the whole rest of the evening to do, exactly, you know, to catch man. up on everything else. No, definitely, man. But uh, you know, alhamdulillah, man. We're you know we're getting through uh Ramadan and just uh you know staying staying positive, staying focused, and that's the most important thing. But man, uh, yeah, just to kind of start off, man, I want to, uh, you know, give you your, your your salute and respects, man, because uh, you know I've been following you for a long time, man, and just uh, you know, 
first time, just kind of as we was reflecting, man, first time I caught you was uh, was that 2003 battle, the infant <laughs> battle you did on MTV, man. And I, I remember the moment when, um, you know, me and my brother was, we was watching, we was watching that battle, man. And we we're like, yo, who's this Arabic guy, man, on here? He's killing them, man. He's killing everybody. And even yeah, yeah. when the battle ended, I'm like, yo, why they have to rob this man? <laughs> so it was yeah, like one yeah, day I used yeah. to go to, like, when I had to go to the barbershop, I, we used to talk about it. We used to see that MC battle. I'm like, yo, I thought they robbed the Arabic guy, man. I, I, that was like one thing we used, we used to always talk about. It. Yeah, yeah, but, man. That that was a uh, yeah, that was a great experience, though, man. I can't, I can't even, uh, I can't front. It was a great experience. It definitely, a lot of people. Uh, it's funny, you know, when you've been doing it for a long time. I mean, you've been doing it for a minute as well. Yeah. Um, but when you've been doing it for a long time, it's funny how different people remember you or recognize you for certain things like they might be you know i mean people some people maybe it's been people that's been listening to me like they've been like yo man i've been listening to you for years but i just realized you were on that mtv battle you know what i mean or like yeah (laughs) yeah it's a trip it's a trip no yeah i mean and 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 now it's like with the internet age like people can google and youtube search kind of your history and you know what what you've done over the years and things like that but um but then again, to see you kind of, you know, continuing on, like, you know, obviously putting out your mixtapes and albums and then, uh, you know, coming through with the with the with the grind time battles and, and stuff that you did. And then uh, and then them freestyles, man, them freestyles, I pretty much broke the Internet every time you drop one of them K Slay freestyles on Shade 45. Like those were those were just immense, incredible, like goat status freestyles, man. So thank you, man. You know what I'm saying just, you know, I definitely had to had to give you your respects for that. Likewise, I mean, dude, I, I've been I, people have been hitting me up about you. Um, like we had a conversation, you know, on the phone the other day, and uh, it's just funny is because I had been seeing your stuff uh, for a while now. And people had just been, you know, being comments, and I'm like, mm, okay. Mm. And then when I saw you on John Connor's uh, live, mm. I, I didn't put it together that these right. was the same, that these right. were the same people. Yeah. And then, uh, finally, I put it all together. I was like, wow. So I have a, a, a you know, immense a, a amount of respect for you. Man. And what you've been doing and, um, you know, um, it's, it's, you know, as well on both sides, what you've been yeah. doing with, you know, on the medical side and then hip hop and then kind of bringing them together and, mm-hmm. um, you know, shine a light. And I think that's unique and I think it's needed. And uh, that's dope, man. So I, I, um, I have a lot of respect for that. And, um, you know, I salute you as an MC. And yeah, uh, man, that that, mean, that means a lot coming for you, man. Because uh, you know, obviously, like you know, I I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a big huge fan of 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 people with sharp pen games, man. And um, you know, like my favorite MCs like Black Thought and Crooked Eye and Royce and and M and and, and these guys like you know just coming out with 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 pen games that like you know that they going they gonna chop heads when they write their bars are pretty much going like penetrate your soul when 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 they rhyme so yeah, you yeah. in that class of MCs man i really appreciate that you know coming from you man that means a lot bro man. likewise man you know uh, you know it's just the jur- the journey of life man is just kind of taking unexpected paths for me like i grew up not knowing exactly what i wanted to do like i just you know i came up in detroit and then i went to school and i just you know, my, my pops, you know, he was a, he was the type of, you know, he's the type of person that said like, yo, man, you ain't going nowhere in this world unless you go to school. Like, you know, he pushed, he pushed that, you know, and it's like, but besides that, I was passionate, you know, to, to follow the path of medicine and just how the human body works and how complex it is and everything. That was something that I always, always in tune with that. Mm-hmm. But I did well in school. You know what I'm saying? I got a presidential scholarship to Wayne State, downtown Detroit. Wow. And then that's when that's when I picked up the habit of hip hop, man. That's when um I used to start jumping in ciphers and little battles on campus and, and started making a name for myself in Detroit. Mm. And then it was kind of like, yo, what do I do? Like, I'm on a set. I'm on a journey to become a, a, you know, go to med school. And then at the same time, I got this passion to be an MC. Wow. And then it's like I was I was going through an internal struggle myself because everybody was like, you could either be one or the other. Like, ain't, ain't, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no way you just going to do this and that. Cause I was like, yo, I'm passionate to be a doctor, but I, at the same time, I want to be a rapper too. Mm-hmm. And then just kind of like going through that struggle. And then over time, just kind of making a way, a way of life for myself to just continue doing both simultaneously. That's and dope. it's kind of like, even when I went to medical school, man, at that time, like the discovery channel did a documentary about me. And that was like at a time where I was thinking about giving rap up, but that it's like, every time I try to, I was thinking about giving it up. Something always came came around that made that pulled me back into it. And like um, in 2013, Russell Simmons invited me to his to his house to do a performance about ethnic understanding. Wow! And then that led me to All Deaf Digital. Um, so I graduated when I was in med school and residency. Man, I was pretty much 
80 percent of the time just focused on 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 the study that was just like literally 16 hours 18 hours a day just working towards the doctor thing mm -hmm. but then after residency i had a schedule as a hospitalist now to do to work seven days on and seven days off and it's just like i continued hip-hop mm -hmm. started putting out records on all deaf digital with russell Sim uh, with uh, russell simmons uh i collaborated with royce and d12 and all those guys and wow and they recently been on the road with the Wu Tang, you know what I'm saying? Oh, 20, 20 plus city tour, and uh, just keeping it moving, man. And now I feel like I, like I'm in a position where, um, you know, having my medical background and being active, an active physician and an MC at the same time, it it allows me to be a translator of of sorts to you know uh, individuals in the hip hop community and the hip hop community at large, and mm -hmm. just the just the, the youth in general, you know, just yeah. to be able to communicate with them and talk to them, um, and bridge those gaps between the medical world and the and the, and the, and the hip-hop world much needed wow man that's that's man that's disgusting man like i i salute you that's just uh you know uh, anybody that can do multiple things like that you know yeah. me I, I went to school um uh at uc berkeley graduated mm -hmm. um with african-american studies and then mm. once i once i grab once i walked the stage it was just like i was like all right I'm doing music now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it was right. I, I worked, I worked like for nonprofits for a while, but once I was yeah. able to do music full time. Um, so, I mean, I, I just focused on that, but I salute anybody that can kind of like go back and forth. Cause I know um, how, how much work it takes to do yeah. that. You know what I mean? Especially in the medical field, because you can't, yeah. it's not like you can take a day off when you go into the hospital. Like you right. gotta be completely focused at all times. Right. So uh, that's, that's just, a, um, that's yeah, that's, yeah it's, that's, it's, that's it's, it's, it's a crazy balancing act but you know it's, it's kind of like you know it's kind of like spe speaking multiple languages it gets kind of like that like where yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you've done them both parallel at the same time so it's so kind of like you know how to go from speaking is let's say english to arabic you yeah, know like yeah. you you you've kind of grown up in both so it's not whereas like if you pick one up later in life it would have been like okay oh, can't do this and that at the same time but if you kind of nurtured your way up this way and you did both simultaneously then it's like you you know how to you know how to juggle it yeah yeah for sure but yeah. uh but but when you was talking about your educational background man uh, i was like it makes sense because that intelligence rubs off on your rhymes man because you be dropping some intelligence in those bars bro thank you man i mean to me i mean that's what it's all of. music has always been about um, like people always hit me up, like sometimes even in my live, they'd be like, yo, do you ever get writer's block? Do you ever get writer's block? Mm. And I'm like, I don't, I never, I've never gotten writer's block. Like once I got to the point in hip hop or in rapping, as far as my craft, when I, once I got to the point where I felt comfortable enough, I learned how to, like when I first started rapping, I just wanted to be a good rapper. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I just want to, I just want to rap. That's what I fell in love with. But as you mature as a human being, you just know like, oh, it's not just about I want to be good. It's like I have something to say. Right. Exactly. You learn how to express what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Then hip hop just kind of like changes up. It just you just look at it differently, at least for me. Yeah. And when I learned how to do that, and then I was just like, oh, I'll never run out of stuff to talk about because I'm just going to talk about what I feel or what, what's yeah. going on in my life at that moment. Right. You know exactly. What I mean? or, or the lens that I see the world through. So how could I run out of stuff to talk about when there's something happening every day? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, and, 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 you know, and, and I hear that when you, when you rap or when you, when you drop your bars that you're not rapping about what the corporate, um, you know, hip hop world wants you to rap about. You rap about what you see and what you're experiencing. And I, you know, I, I, I compare myself also to that because I'm the type of artist that I don't just want to make these like records that everybody, I've had meetings with a lot of these companies, man. I'm sure you've done the same. And a lot of them trying to tell you to, to to be or sound like this artist or that artist or talk about this topic or that, that topic. But my whole thing is always like I'm gonna talk about you know the real. I'm gonna talk about who I am. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hide these things about who I am. I'm gonna be myself. And sometimes you gotta go at those guys. And I hear you going at them all the time and your freestyles and everything, man. Talking about the the the, the industry and what they want out of an artist. Yeah, I, 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 that's the, I mean, that's the beauty about when you do freestyles and stuff like that, because I feel like uh, that's, I look at those like, that's just my time to just vent, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the, <laughs> that's my time to just like, let it all out and just be like, I, you know, I, I really have no, not saying I don't do that with songs, but songs right. are a little bit more, you know, you have a certain goal that you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a certain, yeah. 
in yeah. a story or whatever. But when you when you when you go on a radio station or freestyle like that, um, as as you know as well, it's just like you just it's your time. Like I, there are no boundaries. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, no just boundaries. go go all in. If I want to go for in. ten minutes straight, I can just yeah. go for ten minutes just go, straight. Or what, yeah, exactly. Whatever, you know about whatever I, I can talk about stealing your girl. Or I can talk yeah. about the government. I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I could do it all, and that's that's the beauty of uh those kind of situations. But yeah, man. But I, I want to talk, man. I want to ask you something. Yo, we yo, uh, to... locksmith, your your screen is frozen. I don't know if that's is it me if or you're is seeing it you? that. Is that is that are you seeing that? No, I'm not seeing that. Um, was y'all having difficulty seeing locksmith? Because <laughs> I was too. <laughs> All right, there we go. There we back go. to business. We back to business. Yeah, but yo, yeah. but I wanted to ask you. So we was talking a little bit about this yesterday. You being yep. a physician, and I have a, uh, other friends, uh, close friends who are doctors, and everybody has like you know different viewpoints of this. Yeah. Um, but as far as like you know the medical crisis that's going on right right now, uh, in the whole world. Yeah. And, um, specifically here in the United States, like. When are we gonna be able to go outside again, man? Like, <laughs> yeah. I know. I mean, that's a question that everybody has right now, man. And, 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 the, and, the, and the truth of it is, bro, is like, um, you know, we we have to wait till these numbers start coming down, man. Because, like, you know, as the statistics show in the United States, we still got, you know, about um, twenty five thousand new cases every single day. And you know, that the worry that we have is that we put everything back to normal, everything gets gets back to its regular scheduled program, and then this thing has an opportunity just to strike back and, and the catastrophe could worsen, you know? So we just want to make sure we got this thing all the way under control first before we get back to normalcy. Now, I know a lot of people that's as questioning whether or not we need to have all these lockdowns and if we need to be quarantined and the people are coming up with a lot of theories and things like that. And what I have to say to that is that um, based on my own personal experience um, and, and the type of uh, sickness that I'm seeing in these patients, yeah, we, we definitely don't want to catch this thing. I mean, um, now, granted, you got a good immune system and you got no medical history, you know, you're probably going to pass through it. But it's a it's not a it's not a flu that, you know, OK, it's just a couple of days off and we're good. It's like people get sick for for a little bit of time, like up to two weeks of, of really having some severe symptoms. And, um, you know, it's just why 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 we want to put our, ourselves through it. Number one and number two, we passing it over to our elders who might not be able to handle it. And then the situation gets uh, chaotic for us. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know? So, you're not gonna tell me when. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. I mean, I, I mean, right now, if I'd have to estimate, man, I would say like we gotta, we gotta give it at least a couple more months. A couple more months. Yeah, a couple so more. By, months. So if you say a couple more months, I mean, so I mean, are they saying like by the time? Let's just say, all right. So right now it's May. So you saying June, July. So you saying August. So we're almost back into fall again. Yeah, <laughs> that's so right. Isn't that isn't that when the virus isn't that when viruses start popping back up again? Is in the fall. Uh, yeah, I mean that that's the time when viruses pop back up again. But we don't know if this one's going to strike back or not. We can't even. T I mean, that's no expert in the world is going to be able to tell you what the course of this virus once it goes into recession if it's going to come back or not come back. Gotcha. So that's kind of like you know with the influenza, you know that's got you know that's got uh, annual return. So that that virus has figured out a way to come back every year, but we don't know yeah. if that's, if that's going to happen with this one or not. Gotcha. And the other thing is we don't also don't know if the, if patients that get the virus, if they can get it again, if they can get yeah. infected. And, and I don't know how accurate it is it is because I haven't seen it myself, but they're saying that even people that have gotten the infection one time, they can get it again. Um, mm -hmm. But they might not have as strong symptoms as they did mm -hmm. the first time around. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know? yeah. I mean that's yeah. I mean that's like the flu. You can get that. You can get it every year. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that you know, it, it's and it's different strains. You know, and this one they're saying at least two or three different strains are out there for this uh, coronavirus. Gotcha, gotcha. But um, I mean, but what do you think about? I mean, just from a from a medical standpoint, what do you think about? So you say, okay, we need to stay locked down for another two months. I mean. What does that look like? How much damage is that going to cause? It's doing a lot of damage, and 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 the and the, uh, the damage that it's doing outside of uh, you know the pe patients that are sick. Obviously, people around the world, you know, as far as financially, with their jobs and the crisis of not being able to do you know your regular 
activities. I mean, pr everybody's pretty much on pause right now. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a tremendous amount of damage. I don't think that whatever stipend they're giving people, I don't think that's going to be enough to hold people down for this period of time. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we're, we're going to suffer. I mean, it's going to be a period of suffering. It's just that if we don't do this, we don't know what the other suffering is going to be if we let this go. So we're mm -hmm. kind of stuck between, between a rock and a hard place. Mm. And um, and obviously, this is not an easy situation for uh, for anyone out there to be out, to be quarantined and away from their families and and keeping distances from all people and their jobs, every, everything like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I have a you know, I have a father who is uh, you know, in his seventies, and um, I haven't seen my dad. I mean, I haven't yeah. seen him physically. You yeah. know what I mean? Just because I don't want to take a chance, I don't want to risk it. Yeah. Like, um. I, I'm just one of those people where, like, I mean, I've been following all the rules, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I see people, and I, I'm one of those people where I, I, I ain't gonna lie, like, I'm one of those people that's kind of more leaning towards, like, uh, let's open it up a little bit, not completely, yeah. but just like, you know, social distance. I, I don't think we, you know what I mean? Like, maybe yeah. we have a little, you know, don't have big gatherings, big concerts, and stuff yeah. like that. But, um, you know, we got to kind of, you know, see, but I'm following all the rules. Like, I'm seeing yeah. people, I'm like, yo, people, everybody's out. They're going to parties and having parties at the house. I'm like, yo, I've been in the house by myself for the last, you know what I'm saying, month. Like, right. I'm following all the rules. But at the same time, I think maybe it's just like the government or the people who are making the rules are just scared that if we don't go to this extreme, people aren't going to follow the rules. Close right. Enough. No, I mean, uh, the thing is, I think that, we don't have to be as crazy as we are when we're going outside. You know, everybody's wearing a mask. That's fine. But, you know, everybody's asking me about, do I need to wear that N95 mask where I go every every time I go outside? And, you know, it's just, I, I sometimes I wear the mask. Sometimes I don't wear the mask. And it all depends on how many people I'm going to be around. If I'm, if I'm going to be around a whole bunch of people and yeah. I'm in a situation where, you know what I'm saying, you know, I, I'm probably going to be around somebody coughing or sneezing, then I'll put a mask on. But otherwise, man, you don't you don't need to take all the – crazy precautions that you have like 24 seven everywhere you yeah, go you yeah. kind of have to figure you have to have to think about where you're going and where you are and kind of base things off that yeah i mean i'm already kind of i don't i mean i'm kind of i'm already kind of an isolated person anyway so right <laughs> you know what I'm like no i mean that you know what one thing i always say is man it's it's, it's actually the you got to think about the good that's coming out of the situation too like you you know it's a chance for us to really relax our minds like i was i was talking to chuck d the other day man and chuck d was saying like you know He's so on the road all the time, traveling from country to country to country, that this is actually giving him an opportunity to chill, <laughs> you know, for yeah, a minute yeah. and just relax, stay at home and just kind of like, you know, contemplate, reflect and, and do all those kind of things, man. And just, um, you know, just build spiritually. But I think that, you know, you know, we definitely need to, you know, certain precautions we do need to take as far as like when, when we're around our elders. Me, I'm around this thing. So when I'm in the hospital and I come back from the hospital, even though I take all the proper precautions and I wear the mask and I wear the, you know, the gown and the, and the eye protection, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if it got on me or not. So I'm always, I'm just distant from everybody right now in my life because I'm, I'm constantly exposed. But I mean, for the right, for the regular person who's not constantly around COVID positive patients, um, you know, they have to just kind of play, play it by the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm already socially isolated anyway. If I'm not on tour, I'm you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. at the crib writing and recording. Um, but uh so it's not for me. I had already kind of planned on being home. Like I, I didn't plan on going on tour this year because I wanted to stay at home and make more and make more music because last year I was on the road. Last year I did like over 150 shows, you know. Wow. I mean? So this year I was just like I'm going to try to stay home and, and record because I had all these ideas and all these songs and all these things I wanted to do. You got a studio at the crib? You, you, you record at home? Yeah, I have a setup where I can record. I don't mix here. I yeah. just send stuff to get mixed. I, I was going through it, man, because uh, I got I got some verses, right? And I was trying to get those verses out, but my, my engineer, <laughs> my engineer all shut down. Yeah. And I'm over here trying to find a new studio. I'm like, yo, I wish I had my own situation at home. You see, that that's been I mean, as a doctor, like even situations like that, I mean, it's just like, all right, if it's just you and one engineer in a yeah. studio, yeah, I mean, what, yeah, you know what I mean, what, like, yeah, that, see that, see that's a, that's the situation of overkill because I was talking to my engineer and I was like, yo, he's like, yo, I'm shut down, I can't let anybody in, but yo, as long as you keep you sanitize the equipment, you know, when it's done. Yeah. And you wear the mask and you're distant. It's not like, you know, I'm hugging you. Like, I don't think that, um, I don't think that, I think that's like one of those overkill situations. Like we don't have to go to the lengths of, yeah. you know, shutting down the studio. If you, you know, you're going to be that, you know, 
you, you, unless you're that close to the other person. Exactly, unless you, yeah, but now I got the setup at the house. I just, you know what I mean? I have the mic interface, everything yeah. I need to do. Um, normally, I do go to the studio because I like to just be with my engineer so I can bounce ideas. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. You get you do, you build that relationship with the engineer. Exactly. So now I'm like, I got to I gotta go see this other engineer in a couple of days when I'm going to drop this verse, and I'm like, you know, I'm not, I might not have that same chemistry with him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, but, so, like so, but now I, I, now I just do it at the house. And I just send it to them or send it to whoever I need. Yeah, yeah. Them, you know what I mean? And do it. And if people have been using something called what, that Zoom or something technology? Swift, I was talking to Swifty from mm -hmm. D12, and he said he uses something called Zoom or something yeah. where, he, where he like has a way to like, I don't know, it's like real tech. The Pro Tool session will come right on your phone or something. Yeah, I, well, I, yeah I, I haven't been doing that, but yeah, I guess so. Zoom, I guess when you're on Zoom, you can share your screen or whatever you're doing. So, like, let's just say if I'm on. Pro Tools or Logic or whatever I'm recording, we could we could basically you could be at home and I could be here and we you could be seeing what I'm doing and I could That's be recording crazy. it and they could be like nah you need to relay that or do that differently or let me see how to you know what I mean so you could kind of hear in real time I guess what's going on you know what I mean yeah right 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 definitely yeah. definitely ways to uh, you know get I, I I find it astonishing man the type of things people are coming up with to try to uh, you know carry on their uh, their their normal activities. With all the podcasts and the way they have like all six screens on, you know, everybody logging in and doing these little podcasts and things like that. I think that's pretty crazy, man. Technology, um, man. We got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, yeah, we make the most of it. I mean, I've been, I would say that I've been very productive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I've been home. I've been recording songs. Yeah. I've been, um, you know what I mean? Writing songs. Uh, so I'm just like, okay, if I'm going to be here, I want to be productive. Like, I'm not one of those people I can't just, yeah, just you can't just be like, yo, everything's on pause. I'm just going to sleep 24 hours a day. Like, no. I can't do that. I, I no. can't do that. No, I'm that type of person, too. Like, even when it was like they would ask me to take shifts off, I'm like, no, I got to I gotta, I gotta, be active. Like, if I'm not yeah. active, then it's like, you know, I can't just sit around. Like, that's just not me. No. You know, I got to constantly be up into something. I can't do it. I can't do it. So that's my goal, man, is stay productive, stay focused. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, make the most of this time. And hopefully, yeah. you know, when we do start to ease back into stuff, ease back into society yeah. and what have you, you know, I'd be prepared, ready to go. And you know what I mean? And Yeah. Just take so, I mean, hand. so those are the main things, man. Like, you know, washing your hands regularly and then, you know, wear the face mask when you feel like you're going to be around a lot of people. Otherwise, man, just keep the distance from people. I mean, it just, yeah. it, it's pretty straightforward. You know, boost your immune system. You know, sure. I always say take vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams, zinc, mm -hmm. uh, black seed, ginger, those they buy, you can do buying up all the vitamin C and zinc, man. <laughs> yeah, yo, you know it's crazy because I would go to the store and I'm like looking at the aisle where they got all the vitamins. So they got everything there, but it's like right where the vitamin C is, like everything is just like an animal just walked in there and snatched that whole yeah, aisle out. People same, thing with that, same thing with the Tylenol, because you know they say that you shouldn't take ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and I'm not sure how true or not that is, or how yeah, yeah, like, heard accurate this. it is. But yeah. like you know, the aisles with the ibuprofens, they're all there. But the uh, but the Tylenol is completely like gone, gone. Yeah, so yeah. it's like yo you you spread people spread information out there, bro, and the whole world just goes ape shit. Panics. just goes just ridiculous, man. But I mean, I'm just one of those people, man. Like, like I ain't gonna say I'm the healthiest person, yeah. but uh, I mean, I eat fruits and vegetables every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I try to avoid super fatty foods. I I don't drink anything but water. Like I yeah. don't drink anything. I don't drink juice. I don't mm -hmm. drink soda. I don't drink alcohol. I drink water. That's it. Like you yeah. will never see me with any, or I might sprinkle the vitamin C packs in my water every once in a while. Right, 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 right. But you, I, that, that's just how I am just because, I mean, that's the best thing for you. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's, just, like, it's exactly. Just, just water. So it's just like, I try to do those things to kind of take care of myself. Like people are like hogging for vitamin C. Well, you know what? There's a whole, uh, bushel of fucking oranges right there exactly eat the fruits <laughs> if you can't get the supplements eat the fruits i mean just there's, there's, the there's fruit. definitely I mean, many ways to, to to compensate for a situation man you can't just put you can't just blame that oh i couldn't get it from the store so now i'm just gonna you know eat your yeah. fruits man get some get some strawberries get some uh oranges get some apples some you know what i mean some pears like whatever is available just yeah. eat the fruit like that's the natural that's what that's the natural, natural what's god given to us you know what i'm what saying god Take gave that, us. What eat it what did people do before there was vitamin C pills? Right, like, exactly. Like, <laughs> they still got it. You know what I'm saying? They were still able to get it. And now yeah, we got man. all these processed foods and all these all this junk that they selling to us at the at, at the markets and the, and the fast food joints and everything yeah. like that. Man, that's poison for us, bro. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. You no, know, so I mean, yeah, so you know, healthy eating, 
uh, proper sanitation. You know, people, unfortunately, uh, locksmith, man, people, people really, really didn't know how to wash their hands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People yeah. walking around like with their dirty asses, man, and they not washing properly. Bro. They're not saying And then now Bro. it's like people starting to realize that, yo, this is important. You know, you got to do this. I had this conversation. We had this conversation on tour, right? So being on the road a lot, you know, you go into different venues, sometimes big venues, sometimes smaller venues, whatever, whatever, right? And I would see people like, you know, because I'm one of those people after the performance, you know, I like to shake hands with everybody, take pictures, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. Deal with people. Yeah, build. And, yep. um, and you know, I'm not one of I like I'm one of those people, look, I shake hands, but as long as I wash my hands afterwards, I'm not you yeah. know what I mean? Like I'm not one of those people because I, I am aware that you do you do need to expose yourself to germs. Like, you know what I'm saying? The body needs to get exposed to some bacteria so you can build up a, a an immune system, you know? Mm -hmm. But I always, but you know, afterwards, I'm going to wash my hands. I'm not going to exactly. shake a million hands and then go eat and not, you know what I mean? Uh, and not shake my hands. So um, that's something I've always been conscious of. But one thing I noticed, like being on the road, like, you know, let's just say, uh, you know, you got a venue and it's just like, I happen to be out and there's like a public bathroom. So I was like, let me just run in here and use the bathroom. You know what I mean? Take a leak or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I see people go and they just use the bathroom and they yeah, wash I their see hands all the time, bro. Like, like they yo. literally, they go in, they, they do their business and they walk and they right walk out. Right. And it's like, and man, you like, ain't gonna wash nothing. Bro, like, I literally, I, I literally be like dumped nasty. out and then that same person will come and try to shake your head. Like, yo, <laughs> that, that's like, why, that's yo. why I say you gotta, you gotta be careful, man. Cause a lot of those people, that want to shake your hand at those concerts, man, they doing that. <laughs> Bro, that's what I'm saying. I'd be like, yo. Like, you know what I mean? And that's when I'd be like, damn, it's like I want to show love. You know what I mean? But it's just like. Yeah, like, man. You, 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 you know what I mean? And, and, and that's why, like, you know, as Muslims, they, we, 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 um, Like we'll do like five times a day and yeah. cleanse ourselves over the course of the day. And you got to just keep yourself clean, keep sanitized, keep washing your hands. And people are starting to, you know, develop those practices now because of this fear of coronavirus. But this yeah. is something that we should have be practicing yeah, every I've day. Been, I've been doing this shit. Like, you know, what I'm saying? Like, like I, don't, exactly. I don't play around. Like, if I can't wash my hands, I'm not eating. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if I can't wash, like, I, if I can't, if there's not a place where I can wash my hands, I'm not going to use the bathroom if, if yeah. I can help it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, uh, like I, exactly. Like, and I hate it when I'm sitting at a restaurant or if they don't have a bathroom or something like that. But like, I got, I got. It's not napkins, not enough for me. I got to actually I gotta wash, wash actually hands. get water on my hands with soap and and and, and properly clean it. You know. Yeah, just 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 simple things like that, man. But yeah. Anyway, man. What but what else is going on with you, my brother? What's what else is going? On? Man, um, you know, I got. I'm doing this uh this event with Chuck D on uh Friday. Yeah. He just uh, he just hit me with the time. It's uh it's gonna be at uh. 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific on Friday, May 1st. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you're around, man, tune in. We trying to Absolutely. we trying to get we trying to get the hip hop community to come in. Chuck D and um, you know, he's got a, he's got a whole bunch of questions, and we got a, a lot of topics from medicine to hip hop that we're gonna talk about. You know, me and him go back, man. Me me and Chuck D, uh, we've been going we go back since uh, 2014, man. We're just building with him. I think he uh he, he be playing your records a lot too, man, on rap yeah, station. Shut up. Yeah, for sure. You know shut what I'm saying? He, he, he's I, he's he's a a beloved member of the community that just loves the loves the culture to continue to grow and keep moving, man. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's an honor that he connects with us and keeps us, you know, in the loop with everything. And I'm just trying to, like I said, play my part and, and let people know what's going on with this coronavirus. And, uh, you know, there's so much, uh, uh, you know, misinformation that's out there too. And I'm trying to clear that up and just let people know that, you know, it's going to pass us by. We just got to just chill out for a little bit longer. You know, we got a medication that's working out in the, in the hospital for us now. Mm -hmm. And it, it's been it's been making the uh, the, the the virus uh, symptoms get less after two to three days. And so mm -hmm. show, showing improvement. So there's definitely some hope, you know, that's out there. Yo, and, yo. Um, you know, so it's just a matter of us recognizing the symptoms and, and realizing that we have it because some people are just thinking they have it. They want to get tested for no reason. It's just, you know, once you start having a fever, cough, just kind of self. What I'm telling people is self quarantine, just monitor your own symptoms, boost your immune system and uh, hydrate incredibly heavily just like you would with the flu mm -hmm. as soon as you start noticing any kind of symptoms that you feel short of breath or you feel like you can't breathe no more like you just you it just does not feel like a flu now you feel like you're you're having like asthma or copd when you don't have that history of it that's mm -hmm. when you go to the hospital and get started on treatment right away that's my recommendation <laughs> got you you got let you. that you let that linger too long and then it then it can start causing some real damage in your lungs and as you've seen like um like rappers like scarface um you know, obviously uh 
we lost, uh, you know, we lost some people in the hip hop community this yeah, last rest, year. Yeah, rest in peace, Fred the Godson. Fred the Godson. Um, and then, um, you know, Scarface just revealed that he's got, you know, uh, kidney failure and now he's got to be on dialysis three times a week when he never had kidney issues in the past. Mm. So it's just that, uh, you know, it's like when the virus invades the alveoli, which is the cell that is responsible for getting oxygen to the rest of the body. Um, the problem when this disease gets uh, advanced or if you're not properly treating it with the right medications is that it ends up spreading around to the rest of your body and you could end up having organ failure, organ damage, yeah. and then your lungs could even develop permanent fibrosis and damage um, down the road after the virus clears. So having the virus just pass through is not my recommendation. I recommend people start treatment as soon as they have those shortness of breath symptoms. Of course, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, that's what's up. So, so yeah, man, just trying to stay positive, man, trying to stay proactive. You know, uh, any information I get, any updates I get from the hospital, I try to share that on my social media and I try to share that on, on, on lives like this and on, um, you know, different, different, different avenues just to keep people informed and also keep people optimistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know I mean? nah, we appreciate it, man. I mean, that's what we need, the information. Because, I mean, the more information, the, the the better decisions we can make in our lives. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. And you can't just be listening to Donald Trump talking about, you know, drink a bottle of Listerine or whatever, you know, junk you're talking <laughs> about. You know, it's, you got you got you got to get it from somebody who's actually seeing this thing. Yeah, I don't even, I, I can't even listen to the news. Like, I, I, can't, <laughs> I, I don't I don't watch the news. I don't watch either. I don't watch Fox. I don't watch CNN, like I just can't. It's just to me, it's just too biased. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Either, There's always an agenda. Side. They always have an agenda behind what they're trying to sell you. Like, you know, what's the motive behind what they're telling you? Like, what are they trying to get out of the situation? And people still out there saying, "Yo, was this invented? Did somebody create it in a lab? And uh, what's up with the five G network and and all that stuff?" And and I can't really speak on where it came from and what created this virus. But you know, I could just tell you that it's real. People are getting sick from it. But um. But there's hope. There's there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's not a death sentence like a lot of people are making it out to be. Exactly. Exactly. But we gotta make we gotta protect our our, our elders. You know, we gotta make sure we keep our distances. And as it's a difficult time these next couple months, but we gotta just, you know, keep them safe. That's mo most important because we'll get through it. You know, yeah, yeah. you get it, I get it. You know, we'll get sick, we'll get through it. But we don't want our parents to be in the intensive care unit off of this thing. You know. For sure. Yeah. Shit. I don't want to get sick. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt but you're doing the right thing man you're doing the right thing brother and like i said them bars you spitting man is bars you writing man that's therapy that's medicine as well Absolutely. so um Absolutely. you know when this thing whole thing is all said and done man you know we probably got to put some shit together g oh no it's absolutely it's positively got, gonna happen you know yeah so, so uh, yeah i'm glad we well i appreciate connect, your man. time brother you know what i'm saying and um you know, let's uh, let's continue to spread the positivity and, and uh, you know, hit me up anytime you got any questions. Likewise. You know, yeah. I got all the info. So, you know, we'll take it from there. And uh, ladies man, and gentlemen, hope, we had lots of your people. fasting goes well, man. Yeah. Same. Likewise. Likewise, brother. What time is your what time is your are you breaking your fast? We, you and you and uh, where are you right now? You're in the Bay Area, right? Yeah, I'm in the Bay Area, California. Yeah. So, you, yeah, we're in the same time zone. So we, time, we still right? got what? Th uh, three hours. Two hours. Yeah, yeah, we still got three it. hours to kill. Man, I'm getting I'm getting so thirsty right now. Yeah, dude, that's why I, I got the chapstick. I'm like, man, I got to get some lips, you know what I'm saying? No doubt. Well, hey, man, it's been a pleasure, bro. Um, Stay in touch and, uh, you know, have a wonderful uh, rest of uh, Ramadan. Same to you, my sure. brother. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I appreciate it, man. And we're going to connect more, man. Peace to everybody that's uh, in the live. And um, we're going to do this again. Inshallah. All right, Inshallah. brother. Inshallah. Yep. All right. Salam alaikum. Well, brothers. That was Locksmith, uh, one of the really, 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 really dope lyricists out there right now, man. Look out for him and his craft, man. Check him out on the K Slate Freestyles. Um, just killing it. And uh, I got more music coming for you guys, man. I'm going to be recording. So look out for new Lazarus on the way. And make sure you guys tune in Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Time with... The one and only, the godfather of hip-hop, Chuck D. We're going to be discussing a lot of different topics, and it's going to be ill. Yo, Dre, I see you. What's good? What's good? Put up them L's. <laughs> nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, it's the, it's the, my, my man Divine7i gave me this one right here. You got the world. Got the flag of the whole world strapped on in my armory. So hang me, Saddam, me, bomb me, but you honor me. <laughs>
<laughs> Last army. All right. What's the story with hydroxychloroquine? Man, hydroxychloroquine works, bro. They're saying not to use it, but I still use it, and it's helping. It's helping patients, you know, get better in two to three days. And I'm coupling it with doxycycline instead of azithromycin so that it doesn't ca cause the cardiac problems. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. I'm going to sign out. You guys have a bl blessed rest of the day. Be in touch. Laz Army.